Hi, I'm Dana Woodson, and welcome to At Your Service, a program that features some of the projects, programs, and services of the City of Portsmouth. For today's program, we're taking it a step further and featuring the employees who've been recognized by their peers as the Employee of the Month. After a break, we'll take you to the Employee of the Month ceremonies for the months of March, April, and May. Stay tuned. Imagine what you'd see if every child had a book to read. So the mission is for us to get a book to each and every child. <laughs> so let's join hands, book people unite. On earth, hidden passion. So mama, have a good time. One book could be the mother's family. Helps to change a life. People unite. Read to a child today and spark a lifetime of ambition. What if a disaster strikes without warning? What if life as you know it has completely turned on its head? What if everything familiar becomes anything but? Before a disaster turns your family's world upside down, it's up to you to be ready. Get a kit. Make a plan. Be informed today. Learn how at ready.gov. Welcome back to At Your Service, where on today's program, we're spotlighting the employees of the month for the months of March, April, and May. At this time, we'll take you to the March ceremony, where Ms. Camilla Milford-White is recognized as the employee of the month. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Better, better. My name is Rose McKinney. I'm with Human Resource Management. It's good to see all of you. Um, and we do have the pleasure every month of coming out to various departments to celebrate the city's Employee of the Month. And as shy as she might seem to be over there, <laughs> um, for March 2012, let us congratulate Ms. Camilla Milford White. And all y'all's names. Look. <laughs> see, see? And her daughter's going to be impressed. But with that, we have with us our fine city manager, Mr. Kenneth L. Chandler, who's going to give you some personal congratulatory remarks. Mr. Chandler. Oh, I, I tell you, that's the welcome you expect when you come down to social services, isn't it? <laughs> they say we have to park cars most of the time. Look at the turnout. We always get a great turnout. And of course, we are here to celebrate the achievements of one of our colleagues, Ms. Milford White. Okay. One of the things I always like to mention is this is an honor. And a lot of times it's not the honor that you can get for two per customer, $29.95 at Kmart. Okay. But it's the honor that one of your peers have to recognize what you do. And that honor comes as a result of Ms. Milford White's commitment. Because if you think about it, she makes the commitment, and it's a little bit more than the incentive that's given every two weeks by Director Pottson. Okay. But with that commitment, you know, she actually dedicates her time in service to the city. Uh, coming up on a decade, from what I see here, getting real close in terms of years of service with us here, and um, has also made it a point to serve her country as well. Um, I, I tease her from time to time, she's a coastie. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we are the 12th recognized Coast Guard city in the United States, so um, we're glad to have that commitment here uh, because that's a specialty. And again, what we recognize is Ms. Milford White has been here a couple of years already, and she doesn't keep showing up time after time, you want to say paycheck after paycheck, just for somebody to tell her thank you. So this is a rare opportunity that we get a chance today to say thank you, Ms. Milford White, for your dedication for your courtesy in terms of choosing to work here in the city of Portsmouth, because it is a choice, okay? We recognize with the skill sets that we have, and again, this is social services. We got certain positions that we have new faces every time we come down here, because people have to make the choice in terms of what they do in terms of their own livelihood. 
but we appreciate the fact that you've chosen the city of Portsmouth to spend some of your career time with us. And we also recognize the fact that, you know, she'll be here tomorrow. And it really wasn't about this event today for us just to say thank you to her, but it's really the commitment that goes beyond this time frame. So again, it's a great opportunity to be recognized by your peers, to be selected for this opportunity, and again, recognizing her dedication, because it's her dedication that makes the difference in terms of what we do. A lot of times we talk about service delivery, we recognize this organization has about 2,000 faces that are responsible for the service delivery. It's not the city council's face, it's not the city manager's face. If you think about it as elected officials, if you think about it in my capacity, if I walked off this afternoon and never came back, will services be delivered by Ms. Milford White and this department? They always are, consistently. So again, it's an opportunity to say congratulations to you today. And she hails from the beautiful state of South Carolina. I was actually in your hometown about two weeks ago. And a very beautiful place. And uh, you know, again, we're glad to have her here and glad to have this opportunity to say thank you in terms of recognition of being employed of the month for the month of March. And I also sincerely appreciate your commitment because I know it goes beyond just today. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Mr. Chandler. Well, well said. Well deserved, Miss White. Now, do you know who nominated you? I believe it's my supervisor. <laughs> and how do you know that? We're, we're gonna talk afterwards. Okay. <laughs> Those little things we try to keep a little secret, you know. Right. But she probably was poking around trying to find out. See, so um, at this time, I would like to call up Miss Regina Staten, who did nominate Miss Milford White, and she's gonna speak personally on the nomination that she submitted to the recognition committee. Good evening. Um, I nominated Miss Camelia, yes, we call her Cammy, um, Milford White from the Department of Social Services. I would like to recognize Miss Milford White because she has been with the agency for six years and has proven to be a hardworking and dependable employee. She goes beyond the call of duty to meet the needs of clients, foster and adoptive resource parents, and agency staff. She is the liaison between agency staffs and the foster and adoptive resource parents, and she ensures that the needs of both groups are met with dignity and respect. She works closely with, the community, with community organizations to solicit resources for foster children and families. She coordinates in-service trainings for agency staff monthly and pre-service and in-service trainings for the resource parents several times a year. She works well with everyone and is very committed to her job responsibilities and duties. And that's what I said about Miss Milford White. Um, since I've been here, I've only been here a short time, um, what, a year and some months now. And Miss Milford White has been a real backbone for me. I might get a little emotional. Um, <laughs> And I really work her hard on Fridays, because I hear every Friday, I need a new supervisor. She knows it's Friday, she worked with me so hard. But I, I love my whole team, but today, I just want to say I really appreciate you, um, Cammie, and keep doing the work that you do. Kind of easy to see how the Employee Recognition Committee selected you, so congratulations. Now, now that you kind of know the professional side and all the great contributions that she has made to this department, what we like to share with you now is the lovely flyer. Look, did you see that face she made? <laughs> we also have it displayed here, which gets this. Uh, yes, you know that too. Which gets displayed on the first floor of City Hall. Yes. And so, I want to share with you a little bit about the personal side of Miss Milford White and. We did uh, make sure that she understood disclosing anything was going to be disseminated citywide, so please make sure you only share the things you want shared. So, mm -hmm. let me go into a little more detail. Ms. Camilla Milford White has been a member of the Portsmouth family for just over eight years, which all of it has been serving the Department of Social Services, so you all have hogged her for all eight years. She currently holds a position of senior social worker. Originally from the beautiful Charleston, South Carolina, Ms. Milford White made her way up to the Hampton Roads area through her service in the United States Coast Guard, where she served there for 13 years, and she is still serving as a reservist. 
She obtained her bachelor's degree from the University of South Carolina and is currently working on her master's degree at Liberty University. Aside from her nine-year-old daughter, Kaylee, who is with us today, beautiful young lady, and her miniature Doberman, way to support the animals, <laughs> Tina, her family resides back in Charleston. Some of her favorite things to do include watching football. Wow, should we ask what team? 49ers fan. I guess this year she could talk about the 49ers because they didn't do well this year. <laughs> okay, well, we'll give you that this year. Uh, the 49ers. Okay, so watching football, shopping with her daughter. Do you like shopping? Yes. I don't blame you. Spending time with her dog. Very good. Very good. Her greatest love, however, is spending time with her family and having family get togethers. No doubt a result of her strong family oriented upbringing. When Ms. Milford White was asked what she enjoys most about working for the city of Portsmouth, this is a question that we ask all honorees, she replied that her relationship with her co-workers, that's all of you in this room, along with the happiness that her work brings, are what keeps her here. One specific aspect of her work that she has a deep conviction towards is working with foster families in order to find homes for children and add in some type of stability in their lives. I think that is a true testament to the services all of you do and what she contributes to that. So congratulations. All of that for you. Congratulations. You. And if you would like to say a few words, I'm sure they'd love to hear Woo! from you. <laughs> say thank you guys and thank you for all the support and I'm glad to be working with you and <laughs> just thank you and I want to say thank you to my baby so when I get down and frustrated about work she always makes me laugh so but thank you for all your support and thank you to my foster parents that came and support and thank you for opening up your homes to our children and just thank everybody I'd like everybody to put your hands together for our interim director of social services, Ms. Jacqueline Scott, who's returned with us. Come on up, Ms. Scott. Although Ms. Scott has only been back with us a short little while, she's got a lot of history, and so she's going to say some personal remarks to you as well, Ms. Scott. Good evening. Good evening. Okay. <laughs> I know Cammie is nervous because she does not know what's coming out of my mouth. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to try very hard, Cammie, to keep it straight. But um, Cammie started with us uh, in the benefits program, and believe it or not, that's one of the best places to start uh, to, to move on, <laughs> is to go to, to move on, if you do a good job in benefits. <laughs> because many times we've experienced, I have personally experienced persons moving from benefits, and they leave that skill set behind. And I think Cammie and others will attest to, it's very important to bring that skill set with you. Cammie also shares the distinction of doing a job that I used to do. So I, I hold her at a higher standard. I, pick, I picked on Cammie all the time when I was hired here, or when I was here previously. <laughs> and for those of you who know, I don't pick on you unless I genuinely love you, like you, and, and know that you have the talents and the abilities to move onward and move forward. Uh, so the harder, Cammie, that I picked on you, push you. You must really love me. I love you. <laughs> I don't feel the love. <laughs> um, because she is one of my favorite people. I cannot understand why she got up here and had uh, uh, such few words to say, because she has a lot to say when she sees me. <laughs> but. She brings her training not only from benefits, but she brings her training from the United States Coast Guard. And I have a high regard for Coast Guard. My nephew's is Coast Guard. Um, I like people who bring everything to the table to do their job and do it well. And Cami is uh, outspoken. She's dedicated. Uh, she's passionate about her work with foster parents. That's everything I was when I was that age. Everything. Outside of the box thinking, that's acceptable. I love it. Um, 
stick to her guns when she has a solution. That was me. I love it. Yes, you are my third daughter. I'm just letting you know that today. Okay, we're out of the closet. <laughs> <laughs> but, Cammie, I wish you many years here. I truly do, because we need you. Uh, we need your intellect. We need the spirit that you carry in being a parent to your child. Um, we need the love and respect you have for the foster parents. And I think it's, it's commendable that they're here today in your support. And it's commendable today that your co-workers are here in, in your support. They may talk about you behind your back when you get out of here. <laughs> but it's good things. So I say to all of you, please continue to support our foster care program when Cammie comes to you, and she usually does, she has many ideas when she comes to you. Be honored that one of your own is Employee of the Month. And it's especially fitting, Cammie, as you know, and for those of you who don't know, March is Social Work Month. It is a skill set that just because you're a social worker doesn't mean you possess. I walked downstairs today, uh, mainly in the foster care unit, amazed at the talent that's down there. I hadn't been down there in a while, and uh, Mrs. Faircloth, is she in here, chastised me, basically saying that I got too uppity to come to the third floor. <laughs> so that's why I had to make an appearance. <laughs> but I was amazed at the staff that I met that I hadn't known that long. Uh, I had the opportunity to, uh, with Ms. Staten and Darius Willis. Darius Willis. Mm -hmm. I had them to come up my, to my office this morning, and I felt really bad because they came up and they were like, what did, I, what did we do wrong? <laughs> <laughs> but I was delighted because I took work home last night. It was a breath of fresh air to read a document so professionally done and well written. It makes me feel good that our foster care program is in good hands. But Cammy, I know Cammy is a driving force. I know you all, she gets on your nerves sometimes, but it's only because she's about doing the right thing. Cammy, congratulations sincerely. Take this to heart, because I will not be speaking this well to you again. <laughs> <laughs> but I truly, truly, Cammy, I love you. You know this. You know how I treat you. I do. I love this little lady. <laughs> I'm finally taller than someone else. But I just love her spirit. Oh, yeah. I love her spirit. And when she walks, she walks with purpose. And she lives and laughs like there's no tomorrow. So, Cammy, again, you are so deserving. And I truly mean that. I really, I truly mean it. You are so deserving of this honor. Thank you. You would think Miss Scott was on the Employee Recognition Committee, wouldn't you? I have to consider that. Speaking of the Employee Recognition Committee, I'd like to recognize them because they are the, the team behind these awards. They are the ones that come together and look at all the nominations and vote and decide on who is the worthy honoree for that particular month. So these are the people, Miss Milford White, who just undoubtedly couldn't resist yours. Um, and I have Miss Sharice Grandison Orton, who's here with us from the fire department. She's one of them. Nice job. Thank you very much. Mr. Earl Gaskins, I don't think he's here, but he's from the city assessor's office. He is also on board. I have Mr. John Delinsky from Public Works General Services. I don't think he could make it, but he's on board. And I have Heather Guthrie, and she's also from General Services side. Mr. Delinsky's from um, General Services as well. Heather Guthrie, she's not here either, but this is your team. This is your Employee Recognition Committee um, in conjunction with myself and Human Resource Management. And we are just honored, honored, honored to do this every month. So I encourage all of you there are, there are great employees in the city, and just take a few minutes of your time to recognize them and send it forward, and we would love to come out and showcase them. So congratulations, Ms. Milford White again. Very, very, very well deserved. Um, Mr. Chairman, thank you very much. Ms. Scott, 
Thank you for all of your kind words. Kind words. You're, you're going to get kind words now. <laughs> and all of you, thank you. They have put out a great spread back there for you, so enjoy. Thank you very much. Have a great afternoon. We'll have more at your service right after this. Yeah, I took a trip to Elkhart, Indiana today. Elkhart's a place that has lost jobs faster than anywhere else in America. In one year, the unemployment rate went from 4.7 percent to 15.3 percent. Companies that have sustained this community for years are shedding jobs at an alarming speed. And the people who've lost them have no idea what to do or who to turn to. They can't pay their bills, and they've stopped spending money. And because they've stopped spending money, more businesses have been forced to lay off more workers. In fact, local TV stations have started running public service announcements that tell people where to find food banks, even as the food banks don't have enough to meet the demand. Welcome back to At Your Service. As we continue to introduce you to the Employees of the Month for the City of Portsmouth, let's go to the April ceremony where Ms. Karen Bussey of the Department of Permits and Inspections is recognized. Welcome to the Employee of the Month recognition ceremony. My name is Dee Wright and I'm with the Department of Human Resource Management. And today we have the pleasure of honoring Karen Cherie Heel Bussy. <laughs> she has numerous names <laughs> as Employee of the Month for the month of April 2012. Uh, we also have with us our city manager, Mr. Ken Chandler, and Mr. Chandler will come forward to give us some uh, congratulatory remarks. Thank you, Ms. D. Wright. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Oh, that's a good, strong good afternoon. You know, we have to do this twice. Maybe we found the afternoon is the time. Okay. Well, again, it's a great opportunity to be here in Portsmouth, and it's a great opportunity in terms of some recognition, in terms of Ms. Bussey, in terms of her work in our organization, uh, to really kind of carry out the mission of service delivery. And a lot of times I always get a chance to reflect on the fact that it is about 2,400 people who really make it happen. It's not just one particular face, it's not our council, it's not the manager, it's not any particular office, but it really is about 2,400 faces that make things happen in the city. And in terms of making it happen, we recognize that that commitment that Mrs. Bussey's made, um, you know, career service here, a number of departments, um, you know, native Portsmouth person, married 20 some odd years too, you know, just, just all of that good stuff that's in the mix, you know, that represents, you know, the people who provide service in the organization, that we know from Ms. Bussy that that commitment is a whole lot more than the incentive that comes every two weeks, direct deposit, everybody knows what that is. And um, not to say that we'd all do it as a volunteer service either but we recognize it's really more so the commitment that people make. And you know, the economy's a little tough right now, but we also realize for the services that are rendered, that Ms. Bessie really could choose to provide those services other places if she desired. But she's really made the choice to be here in Portsmouth. And Ms. Bessie, we sincerely congratulate you and say thank you for that, because we appreciate that. And we also recognize that with that choice and with the commitment, that the number of years Ms. Bussey has been doing what she's doing, we know once this week goes out and the next week comes back in, and ever so often there's that incentive week as well, she'll be back. She'll be back again to pick up where she left off, providing those services, and we also realize that she didn't do it for a ceremony with a cake. Okay, it really is the commitment. So, you know, I'll close with saying, you know, it's always nice to be recognized by your peers. Um, it's an honor that you can purchase at Kmart for $29.95, two per customer. You know, somebody really has to recognize what you do and observe and really make a decision to take the time to write something down, to document what you've done. And, you know, it's that commitment that we recognize, because, again, it is an honor to be selected by your peers. You couldn't solicit it on your own. You can't say, vote for me and all of that stuff. It's just not that type of thing. So again, we really have an honor and time today to recognize Ms. Bussey and recognize what happens in this organization when we have folks like Ms. Bussey 
who get this time, just a minute of time, for us to say thank you. And uh, it's the opportunity that we wish we had all the time, but few opportunities come by for us to just say thanks, Ms. Bussell. Really appreciate it. Congratulations. Mr. Richard Hartman, would you please come forward? Mr. Hartman is the Director of Engineering, Traffic Engineering. Good afternoon. Pleasure to be here. Uh, I don't I thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's hard to, hard to follow that speech from Mr. Chandler here. Uh, I don't want to say ditto, but, but, <laughs> but looking, at, looking at Karen here, this is, this, is, this is an honor and this is an elite group you're in. You, know, you look at how many employees we have, and uh, you've been picked out of all these employees for this month for the Employee of the Month. I think this is, a, this is an incredible honor, and you should be proud of that. And I, I can't say enough about it is congratulations. And, and glad to see this. Glad to see you be this bestowed upon you. And it's, it's, again, it's an elite group, and you can take that as a, as a real, as a real piece of pride here, and something you can look back on and really feel good about. So, congratulations to you. Thank you, Miss Bussy. I heard someone in the audience ask you if you knew who nominated you. Well, drum roll, please. <laughs> <laughs> that would be Miss Theetta Rayner. Ms. Rayner, would you please come forward? I'd also like to say good evening to everyone and want to thank you for taking time out of your schedule to come and join in with us in honoring Karen Bussey as Employee of the Month for the month of April. I will read my nomination for her. Karen Bussey, also known as Cherie, has been employed with the City of Portsmouth for 25 years. She joined the Department of Permits and Inspections December 6, 2003, where she later became one of the team leaders of the Systematic Sweep Team. As a team leader, she would map out logistics for the members, of the, uh, for the members to prevent overlap of inspection and duplication of cases. A systematic sweep consists of exterior inspections of every structure within neighborhoods throughout the city. She provided updates of areas as as each sweep was completed to the assistant director, who in turn reported this information to city council as requested. This team received Team of the Quarter Award in 2010. Cherie is the go-to person whenever we needed to create a report to track various code enforcement activities, which included, one, our vacant structures program. More than 2,000 structures were cataloged Notices and forms were created for reporting and receipts of registration fees for these structures. Secondly, damage assessment. Over the past two years, the department has been working on a program to capture information required by FEMA for structures damage following a storm. Cherie has been the front person working with information and technology to create this program. Third, our derelict structures program. This program was instituted following the adoption of the Derelict Structures Ordinance in 2009. Cherie worked with Donna Morrow in getting the notification letter and form set up in Tidemark. In addition to these reports, she has created many educational brochures regarding codes and ordinances that this department enforces. This information is distributed by our inspectors to civic, league, to civic leads within their assigned areas, as well as customers who come into our office, and provided to participants of the Citizen Neighborhood Academies. And creating this information in-house has decreased our budget expense for printing costs. Cherie received a Certificate of Appreciation in October, on October 8, 2010 from the Fire Department for her work on the Derelict Structures Program. The Fire Department works very closely with our code enforcement and with code enforcement in addressing hazards that surround vacant and derelict structures. Cherie's interpersonal skills, her warm spirit, and commitment to her job deserves more than what she's receiving today. She has never said, I cannot take on another assignment, although it is evidence that it does become overwhelming. Some of this department's accomplishments can be attributed in the work she has done with the programs mentioned earlier in this nomination. And I had no heartburn in nominating Cherie. She's my right-hand person, you know, and uh, I couldn't say enough about um, what she does for the department. 
the things that we share as supervisor and just working together on a day-to-day -day basis. We've crossed some, had some crossroads in our lives that are very similar. So it's more than just a business relationship. It's also our relationship as friends. So at this time, Cherie. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> I don't, they done said, you know, have you gotten it rented down? I say no, but uh, it was on my hand, but I think it's gone now. So I, just, I just want to thank everybody for coming out today. I want to thank you, Ms. Rayner, for nominating me as employee of the month. You go about every day, but you don't realize when somebody value and appreciate the work that you do until they do something like this, and I really want to thank you. I want to thank my coworkers because they work hard and they're dedicated and they help my job uh, become easy. And I want to thank them for being my second family. And I just want to say thank you to everybody. I appreciate it very much. I see you. moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. And now we'll take you to the ceremony where the team of the quarter was recognized. Ballora Baskerville and Cliff Jones were recognized as a team of the quarter for the first quarter of 2012. Good morning everyone. I'm Dee Wright with the Department of Human Resource Management. And every month we have the pleasure of honoring an employee for Employee of the Month or Team of the Quarter. And this morning, we have the pleasure of um, recognizing April 2012 team of the quarter. Uh, the team is called um, the Float Team. They were nominated by Mr. Lavorce Pace, and the team consists of Valora Baskerville and Clifton Jones. Also, we have joining us today the city manager, Mr. Ken Chandler, and we also have deputy city manager, Mr. Brandon Dockery. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Chandler to the podium. All right. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Say, it's Friday. Yeah. I can't make that happen. Okay. Well, we're also we're always pleased in terms of being here this morning for a little bit of recognition, an opportunity to say thank you. Uh, an opportunity to recognize an accomplishment by our peers. And uh, Viola Baskerville, Mr. Clifton Jones, uh, for a number of years now, uh, they have been responsible for doing a massive float uh, that appears in the uh, Christmas parade that takes place over in another city, Norfolk. Uh, but again, uh, outstanding work and always recognized uh, for that float. And I think people have come, become accustomed to looking for it. Uh, but one of the things we always recognize uh, with Team of the Quarter or even Employee of the Month, uh, team is real important because it does stand for together everyone achieves more. And uh, by the efforts of these two individuals, uh, they do have other jobs and they do have other responsibilities. So these are things that they do for the joy and above and beyond the call of duty. And uh, we recognize in terms of their commitment to the city um, that it is just that, it's a commitment. It's not something that's renewed every two weeks. Of course, every two weeks we do get that incentive, you know, that direct deposit incentive uh, that, that helps out with the livelihood. Uh, but this is one of those recognitions where your peers have recognized something that you do. And we don't have an opportunity often to say thank you for the things that you do that are above and beyond. Uh, we know Willard Hall runs fine. You know, the recreation programs and services run fine. But what we see in team today is that these are two faces amongst about 2,400 that really make service delivery happen in this city. And again, it's the commitment that they have because we know, you know, today's Friday, but Monday will come. And when Monday comes, you know, they'll be here. 
and they will do the duties that they do. And when it's time for this uh, float to be done again for another year, uh, they will work hard and put in all the extra hours, early morning, late night, we hear all about it, uh, to make the final product, you know, the top notch that actually represents this city. So we get a chance to say thank you today and recognize the fact that for what they do, they don't do it for thank you. Because how many years has it been with the float? I know I've been here just about five. So it's been here just about every year that I've been here. And keep in mind, they did it the first year four years ago, they've done it each year after, and they didn't have an award ceremony to say thank you. So that does represent the commitment that they have. So we appreciate both of you all, and thank you for your teamwork in terms of making the city look good. And again, not for personal recognition, but an opportunity to be recognized by your peers. And that's one of the highest honors you can have. Because it's not like you can go down to Kmart and get two for $29.95 and get two for custom. Uh, so somebody had to recognize what they did. And again, they didn't do it just for recognition. So we thank you all and we celebrate both of you all today and really appreciate what you all do to make Portsmouth move forward. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chandler. That's a true testament of how deserving these two are of this prestigious award. Um, Mr. Godfrey, would you please come forward? Thank you. All right, who took the blue folder? <laughs> Change it for a purple one. Good morning. It's my pleasure to be here, and I'm so proud to, to be a part of this recognition service for Valor and Cliff. Um, and the department is, is very proud and, uh, and the way that they represent our department and our city uh, around the region. It's fair to say that every city employee is doing more work today than they were hired originally to do. This began several years ago with the shrinking of budgets and continues today. But our workforce is resilient and adaptive and they readjust and take on the task of vacated positions so that the level of service remains steady in spite of the smaller staff. Every department deals with this. Parks and Rec is no different. Cliff Jones is a recreation supervisor. His real job is to coordinate the dozens of adult and youth football, soccer, basketball, baseball, and softball leagues in the city, to schedule games and practice times on fields and courts, to coordinate officials, enforce regulations, equip facilities, and most importantly, take calls from the happy parents of Team A who couldn't get on the field because some other group left a mess or tore the field up or went over their practice time. It is a thankless job for one individual, but Cliff is dedicated to it and he never hesitates to respond to complaints that inevitably come on the weekend after he's already put in more than 40 hours. Valor Baskerville is a Willett Hall manager. Besides Valor, there's one other full-time position authorized for Willett Hall. That position has been vacant since December, during the peak of the concert season. The lawyer manages contracts, deals with promoters and their finicky performers, patches up an aging performance hall and stage, and manages to provide an incredibly valuable performing arts program that operates as a successful enterprise in our city. She has her own fan base too, as many of the concert goers are seniors and they can be pretty demanding and high maintenance in their own right. Uh, through their passion for Portsmouth and their desire to make it shine, through their appetite for challenges, and with their self-taught expertise, Valor and Cliff have, come, have become the performance planning team for Parks and Rec for the last several years. It starts with Seawall Music Festival in the spring, Sunday concerts throughout the sun, summer, the week-long list, or excuse me, the weekend-long list of Emoja musicians, which is now in the spring, used to be in the fall and culminates with the Old Town Holiday Music Festival during the Christmas holiday season. Now there are other Parks and Rec staff and staff from other departments that are part of the team that works on these events. Planning and implementing these events are also not part of their job descriptions. But there's a department expectation of success and a commitment to be met. And so Cliff and Valora unselfishly take the lead. But there is one project that is a bit of a hot potato, the flu. The Grand Illumination Parade in late November is our chance each year to make Portsmouth shine amid the lights and glitter of Norfolk. We don't have to have a float, but as LaVorce will tell you, we'd look pretty foolish if we didn't. 
It's just that finding a department to take on the creation and decoration of a float each year with a new theme is always a challenge. When employees are trying to spend more time, uh, with uh, more of their non-working time with families in anticipation of the holidays, this is a job that means working nights and weekends in the dark, dank Port Norfolk water tower to build the float. And when performed well, the float builders are rewarded slash punished with next year's float. The float project is truly a labor of love, and Ballora's and Cliff's passion for it is evident. Even after the 2010 parade, when just hours before the lineup, the float had a flat tire, got stuck in the water tower, uh, the generators ran out of gas near the parade start, they still came back last year and rebuilt the float for the 2011 season. This kind of selfless commitment and dedication to making Portsmouth look good is what makes me so proud to work with them and why they are truly deserving of the Team of the Quarter Award. Please join me in thanking them. As I shared with you just a few moments ago, um, this team was nominated by Mr. LaVorce Pace. He shared some very valuable information with the committee and the committee felt that that information um, was deserving of this team winning the award. Mr. Pace, would you please come forward to share with us why you nominated these two people? Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, it gives me great pleasure to have nominated these two for this particular award. Um, you know, every year we have a partnership with the Downtown Norfolk Council that allows Portsmouth to have uh, participation in their Grand Illumination Parade. And they do a lot of work to make sure that um, everybody who's involved gets their fair share of image enhancement and, and, and uh, visual appearance. And so when we initially did the float, the float, of course, knew it looked, you know, it looked nice. As the float began to age, you know, we needed some some glitz and glamour, and we didn't have it. And so what we ended up doing was um, Valor and Cliff um, did not hesitate whatsoever. They decided that they would work on it. You know, not only did they um, work on the float and make it look better, uh, because of course float making has evolved from chicken wire and carnation roses. And so they went to Norfolk and actually took float making classes to learn how to make their float. And I mean, they did this on their own time. Nobody asked them to do it. They were willing to do it to raise the bar. And that's one of the things that we try to do here in the city of Portsmouth. You know, marketing communications, of course, is responsible for the image of Portsmouth and branding. But when you can get other departments who sew into that vision to understand that we need to look a certain way outside of our city as well as within our city, uh, we can do some wonderful things. So I sincerely appreciate what they've done because, like I said, you know, one year we won Best Illumination. And, you know, we had no idea that we were going to win. I mean, of course, we always put our best foot forward. But they work with this float tirelessly. They work alone. They go out to the water tower. They are pulling and stapling and doing all this stuff. And I mean, it's amazing. It is really amazing. And so um, the fact that they've been able to do this by itself, I remember um, in previous years when we used to do a float, it was a, a group effort where a whole lot of people would come by the garage and work. These two did it by themselves. They did not complain. They did not murmur. They did not do anything. All those negative things probably I would do if I had to do it by myself. But <laughs> they, they did it without a hitch. And I just sincerely appreciated their efforts and wanted them to know that um, their efforts were not going unnoticed. And you know, not only did we in Portsmouth notice it, but uh, Noelle uh, Gramlich, who is one of the organizers in Portsmouth, she was just flabbergasted and excited about the fact that they participated in the program to learn how to make floats. And when we won, they were probably more happy than we were. I mean, they were just as happy as we were. So I sincerely appreciate all that you all do to support not only the city of Portsmouth, but what you do uh, from the, the Department of Parks and Recreation to help us further our brand. And you know, somebody said to me, well, I don't think two people as a team. I said, well, imagine this. If you and somebody else were in a canoe and headed downstream and had to paddle to try to not go overboard, if you made it and you didn't go overboard, I would consider that to be a very good team. It was only two people. So I sincerely appreciate your efforts. And just remember, for those of you who would like to nominate two or more people, two is a team. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Pace. Okay. The letter of excellence I would like to read to you. It says, Team Award for April 2012 
presented to the float team, Valor Baskerville, Clifton Jones. Congratulations to the float team on your selection for the City of Forster Team of the Quarter for April 2012. As a team, you are truly dedicated, excited, and loyal employees. Whenever we needed your expertise for creating, fabricating, and constructing a beautiful float for the 2009 and 2010 Float for Holidays in the city, you never hesitated and performed the tasks as stellar employees. In 2009, Portsmouth won the award for Best Illumination. In the parade, and your hard work contributed to the success. You both took fabricating and design workshops and created a winning entry, making all of us Portsmouth proud. The city of Portsmouth and its citizens are thankful for the dedication and commitment your team brings to our Portsmouth family. We are very proud and appreciative of your continued efforts and we know that you both will continue to achieve excellence on behalf of the city of Portsmouth. With sincere appreciation, Kenneth I. Wright, Mayor, Kenneth L. Chandler, City Manager, and J. Brandon Godfrey, Deputy City Manager. And the floor is open for you all to say a few remarks if you'd like. Um, I'd just like to be thankful and praise God to be recognized from your peers. It's always um, a great opportunity to, to have that opportunity to be recognized from someone. Also, it was funny that everyone said, you took a float class. They said, why you? I enjoyed it. I had to step up my game. And I wanted to learn more about the float because I never have had the opportunity to do that. So it was fun taking the class. I recommend if you're doing something out of your goal or out of your range, step up your game and um, take some classes. Thank you. I'd just like to say thank you to everyone that uh, there were times that we needed other things um, and general services, the Parks Department, our peers at Parks and Recreation always stepped up if we needed a hand um, putting the sail on the float. Thanks guys, they always showed up to help us uh, do things like that and uh, we really appreciate that. I definitely want to thank Mr. Jones for always letting me get my way. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, no, we're not doing that. <laughs> but I just want to um, thank, of course, Mr. Um, Brandon for always being there for us. And a special thank you to LaVoris for recognizing us and um, making this possible. possible. We really appreciate that. So just wanted to say thank you. So, what's it going to be? Uh, we could ride bikes, skating, movies, zoo, whatever you guys want to do. Can we just do this? Yeah. We could just do this. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. <laughs> Take time to be a dad today. Welcome back to At Your Service. Ms. Donna Jordan of the Police Department, and more specifically, Safety Town, was recognized as the May 2012 Employee of the Month. Let's go to her ceremony. Every month, Human Resources has the pleasure of going to the department and uh, honoring Employee of the Month. So today, we have to honor Donna Jordan for the month of May of 2012. Uh, we also have with us Vice Mayor Whitehurst, and we also have Mr. Stuckwich, uh, school superintendent. And the floor is available at any time if you all want to say any remarks or anything. Uh, let's see, Donna had asked me when I met with her who nominated her. So I told her that she would have to wait. And that person is here. And that's going to be Beverly Morgan. So Beverly, would you like to come up? <laughs> it was also Mr. Lombardo from our procurement and risk management. So if you wanted to come up and just tell the group why you felt uh, she was deserving of employee of the month. I will do that. I'll say some good things about you, Donna. That's going to be good. I'm just going to read what I, what I have written. All right, don't make me cry now. You're not going to cry. <laughs> We, and I say we from risk management, from Mr. Lombardo, Mike Lombardo, and myself, um, from the Department of Risk Management, we should uh, nominate Donna uh, from the Department of the Police. Ms. 
Jordan has been with the police department for 15 years and is currently assigned to the crime prevention unit. She is a certified crime prevention specialist and works at Safety Camp. What I'm telling you, all of you know. Uh, she assists businesses and citizens within the city of Portsmouth by providing safety tips and surveys to prevent them from becoming victims of crimes. Her main job responsibility is conduct of classes, conducting classes at Safety Town for the children in Portsmouth. Ms. Jordan works with the volunteers of Safety Town daily to ensure that the children in Portsmouth know pedestrian and bicycle safety. Ms. Jordan is dedicated to her job her volunteers, the children, and the Portsmouth Police Department. You know, that's quite an honor for uh, for someone outside of our department to recognize you as well. So that's, a, that's a, quite an accomplishment there, Donna. Um, <coughs> Donna's actually been on the department, I guess, for almost 17 years now. Um, she, was, she came on as an employee uh, about the time I was getting out of training. Um, she has uh, she's always been a big part of the, the crime prevention face um, for the police department. Um, known Donna ever since uh, ever since I like I said got out of training. Um, so we've sort of grown up together in this department. Mm -hmm. um, she has a strong passion passion for her job. For anybody that's worked with her before, you know that she takes on a responsibility and really wants to follow through, make sure that, that uh, everything is done correctly, and, and you can really sense that in her work ethic. Um, energetic and uh, always fun to be around a lot of good stories over the years I'm not going to embarrass you with any of them right now <laughs> but uh, always always fun to be around um, Donna really does an outstanding job of coordinating uh, our volunteers um, over at Safety Town and through the crime prevention uh, you know we can't do our job without uh, volunteers in this department and it takes someone like Donna to, to keep uh, to keep that program moving forward um, she and the other people that work within crime prevention uh, and, and so many other people within the department as well but but Donnie do an extraordinary job with that um, on behalf of Chief Hargis who's unable to be here today uh, due to being out of town just want to say thank you very much for, for all that you do for the department we're really proud of you for your accomplishments and uh, this is a, a job well done keep up the good work so thank, thank you, you. I've got to go to a meeting at 3.30 out at Hodges Manor, so i got to be out of here in a few minutes. I just want to say this, Donna. When I think of Safety Town, I think of Donna. I, that She is the heart and soul of Safety Town. Everything kind of revolves around her out there, and she knows how to get people to come to work and enjoy coming to work, even though they're not paying them to come to work. <laughs> like Mr. Randall out there, BRS pays Mr. Randall. That's true. We've got, we've got outstanding folks that work with Donna, and I think that's because of her personality and, and just her commitment to Safety Town and the kids out there. It's a great program, and uh, every year we try to add a little bit more out there. It doesn't happen fast, but I know we're putting a shelter out there that we're working with the sheriff and city and schools together. And, if we can just keep adding, but uh, Don, I just thank you on behalf of the school system for what you've done for literally thousands of children over the years. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. I'm the president of Safety Town for everybody but John. <laughs> <laughs> she runs me and everybody else. Does, does a great job. Thank you, Donna. Thank you. <laughs> I'm Vernon Randall, and I retired from the Portsmouth School System in 1991. I was playing golf every day. And I bypassed Safety Town and I saw Bob Wise, who's deceased now, out there at Safety Town. And I went over to the fence and talked to him. And he talked me into coming to work <clears throat> for Safety Town. But this lady here is the reason why I'm still there. I started in 19. 93 and I'm still there and she's the reason and the kids while I'm still there volunteering I had the pleasure of meeting with Donna and talking uh, with her uh, getting information with regards to her personal side getting to know her personal interests and things of that nature so let me just share a little bit of information with you all about Donna 
Ms. Donna Jordan began her 17-year career with the City of Portsmouth in the Police Department, where she is currently assigned to the Crime Prevention Unit. She is a crime prevention specialist and works at Safety Town, which is a miniature city where realistic pedestrian traffic conditions are explained in the classroom and practiced on the streets of Safety Town. As a native of Portsmouth, she graduated from Woodrow Wilson High School and also attended Tidewater Community College. Donna has one daughter and one son, Amy Rollins and Kendall Jordan. In addition, she is a proud grandmother of five grandchildren. When Donna is not working, she enjoys reading, gardening, and spending time with her grandchildren and her five-month-old blue pit, Bella Blue. <laughs> when asked what she liked most about working for the city, she said working with the volunteer seniors, Mr. Randall, <laughs> most of which are retired and school aged children in Portsmouth, ensuring the children are aware of pedestrian and bicycle safety practices. The volunteer seniors take time out of their busy schedules to share their knowledge with our children. Thank you, Donna. Well, um, Beverly, yes, thank yes. you for nominating me, well, and it, well, it really well, was a surprise that it was you. Well, I'm glad it was a surprise, but you definitely deserve it. Perfect. And you definitely kept it a surprise, didn't you? <laughs> I mean, because I, I I asked Jim, even though I didn't think it would be him, but <laughs> him and, and Joyce and Tisha and my sergeant out there, and I thought, well, how my sergeant couldn't do it? He's only been with us a short time. Well, this is an honor. I, I have to tell you, I've been nominated a couple of times, like for Employee of the Month through the police department, but I've never achieved that goal. So this is even better because now I'm employed for the whole city. Right. So, thank you, everybody. Is there anyone else here that would like to say a few words on behalf of nice words? <laughs> I've known Donna ever since I have been with the city of Portsmouth. I, as some of y'all know or may not know, I started my career with the city of Portsmouth and the police department. But I left to go to bigger and better things. <laughs> but one of the nicest things that, that ever happened to me in the police department was working with Donna. She has never lost her enthusiasm. She has always been exactly like she is, just like most of the members of the police department that have been on the department for quite some time, and there are a number of them in here that I see. Uh, the police department has a way of becoming uh, infectious in a lot of people, and it shows in their enthusiasm and their willingness to do things. And Donna certainly is the epitome of a volunteer that has turned the, their volunteerism into a full-time job to serve the citizens of Portsmouth, and she really should be appreciated. Thank you, And Jane. you are appreciated. Thank you for watching this special edition of At Your Service, and congratulations to the employees who were recognized on today's program for their dedication and commitment to the city of Portsmouth. For At Your Service, I'm Dana Woodson.